Good afternoon, and, and thank you for coming. I, I want to tell you in this brief presentation a little bit about some of the new research in nanotechnology in my lab. And you may have heard a lot about nanotechnology, so I, I want to spend a little bit of time explaining what it is, because it might not immediately be clear to you what those terms exactly mean, even though you read about it in a newspaper nowadays um, all the time. First of all, that picture there, that big black bar you see is a, is a microscope picture of a human hair and the little fiber that you see wrapped around giving light is a nanofiber, fiber that is on the nanoscale. So right away you can see that nanoscale means something that's much smaller than a human hair. So this talk, as that picture shows, because the picture gives you the essence of my entire talk, bending light at a scale much smaller than a human hair. Normally, if I take a laser beam or any light beam and I shine it up, it goes in a straight line. It doesn't bend, it goes straight. You need to do something in order to bend the light. You could use a mirror, but that's not very convenient if you have to send the light far away, which you need to do nowadays whenever you place, for example, a telephone call or you make an internet connection. The signal that goes from your computer to whichever computer you connect to, or from your telephone to whichever telephone you connect to, travels in the form of light through an optical fiber. And that fiber bends the light in whatever shape the pass needs to take to go from one device to another. So that's one of the things I want to tell you a little bit about. I want to tell you about guiding light, and I want to tell you a little bit about nanotechnology. Nanotechnology means the fabrication of devices on the nanometer scale. A meter is about a little bit more than three feet this size. And nano means one billionth. So one meter, big step. Let's divide it by a thousand, you get to a millimeter, which is the spacing between my fingers right now, very little here, which is about the size of a pinhead. Divide that by another factor of a thousand, and you get to what is called a micrometer, which is the size of a human red blood cell. A human hair, the one I showed in the beginning, has a diameter of about 100 micrometers. So you could put 100 red blood cells next to each other in order to get the thickness of a human hair. A nanometer is a thousandth of that. It's the size of a virus. It's about 100 thousandths the diameter of a hair. Why are we interested in that? Because we'd like to build devices that are very small for many reasons. I'll come back to that at the end of this short presentation. So that's why nanotechnology is important. It's at the frontier of science in order to, and technology, trying to make little devices the size of one nanometer. OK, so now let's talk about guiding light, the other ingredient of my talk. Guiding light means transporting it from one point in space to another point in space. And not necessarily along a straight line, because that would be trivial. You just shine a flashlight or a laser beam or anything else from one point to the other. No, we want to get it from inside your house, somewhere in the Boston area, to, let's say, some other house in San Francisco, traveling through the ground, maybe little bits of pieces through the air, but most of it through the ground, through optical fibers. How do we do that? Well, you might think that's odd that we can actually use materials to bend the light, but it's something you may have seen. If you swim underwater and you look up at the surface, something we don't usually do because it's, you know, it's, it's sort of awkward to go underwater and raise your head. You, the air goes out of your nose and water comes in, so it's unpleasant. But if you actually look up at the surface of the water, what do you see? How many of you have ever been swimming underwater and looked up? What do you see? A mirror, exactly. If you look up, it looks as if the surface of the water is metallic. It looks like a, like a mirror, like there's some silver coating on the water. As you can see in this picture, you can actually see the reflection of the girl's bathing suit in the surface. You know, and, and, and the more quiet the surface of the water is, the more still it is, the better you see that it actually acts like a mirror. So here's another picture of a woman sitting on the, on the ground, and you can see the reflections of her fins in the surface of the water. Now, incidentally, that's when you go from inside the water looking up towards the outside. Let me show you a few pictures I took on my kitchen table a few days ago. Here's a wine glass filled not with wine, but water. And 
as you can see, it looks like a mirror. It's reflecting a white surface on which I'd put this wine glass. And if I put a marker on top of the wine glass, you cannot see the marker. You cannot see at all towards the outside. In fact, if I hold another marker below the wine glass, you can see the reflection of that marker on that surface of, uh, of the water. If you look at this woman sitting on the ground there below the water from the top, you can actually see her legs. So you can look into the water, but not out of the water. The interface between water or plastic or any other transparent material, glass, acts like a perfect one-way mirror. So why is that? The reason is that light, which travels very fast, but not infinitely fast, travels more slowly inside a dense material like plastic or water than inside air. So as it gets, as this light beam here, for example, travels first through the air, and then if, I, if it hits glass such as this, it slows down a bit. It slows down by about 50%. 30%, I should say, rather than 50%, as it gets inside this glass. Still very fast, covering you know, one foot in about one billionth of a second, but you know, a hair more slowly.